Not sure if many of you know, but we do have a virtual tier within the Design Coven virtual pro member tier, which includes three virtual meetings a month where we set intentions. We do group coaching. So bring all your questions. We answer those questions and you get to learn from other people going through the same struggles as you. We also do a business practice meeting. So we'll have somebody on to share a business practice that we can all benefit from. And then we also do a product training. So getting a sustainable, eco-friendly line to come on and share who they are so that we can be supported with other like-minded businesses. And if you're not quite ready for pro, you can always join our free community where you will connect with other like-minded holistic interior designers. You don't have to be an interior designer if you are kind of just dabbling or you're aspiring or you're looking into this field. We invite everybody from all journeys and we don't, again, have to be a designer. You don't have to have a degree. We're just a beautiful community of like-minded people looking to create healing spaces, not just for ourselves, but for our clients and future clients. Come join us at designcoven.com forward slash join. You're listening to the Holistic Interior Design Business Podcast. This is a podcast that guides you as a new or inspiring independent interior designer navigating your entrepreneurial path. Here with my over 20 years experience, I will share my holistic approach to design with intention and ancient practices, including feng shui, all incorporating mind, body, and spirit into my design projects. You will also learn from seasoned interior designers as they give strategies and insight of how they built their businesses and continue to work in the field. Together, we will discover supportive trade partners, new ideas, creatives, and inspiring artists from around the world. I'm your host, Rachel Lorraine Crawford. Hello, and welcome to episode 113. We are talking about designing with intent today, using biomorphic design to create spaces for wellness. This is just another aspect of holistic interior design. I thought I would bring forward a practice that I do when designing spaces for wellness, you know, just in that realm of making sure that we're taking care of our clients on all levels. Before we start, I'm going to go ahead and light our candle, get us into the present moment. Doing with the element of fire, your creativity. And I have a new deck today. I am pulling an Oracle card from the Your Wise Animal Body. This is an Oracle deck for the nervous system, um, which is so important. I've really just been trying to connect with my own personal um, nervous system and body lately. And I thought um, you might want to be introduced to this beautiful deck. It's by Serpent Fire, uh, one of my favorite deck creators. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it hard. What we've got and our card today is attend say is what it says in parentheses and this is connecting to our throat chakra so really expanding opening releasing any blockages that we might have that's keeping us from speaking our truth um, or communicating with ourselves and others the affirmation or the mantra that they have for this card is I speak clearly and directly with myself first, and this leads to effective communication with others. So huge throat chakra uh, energy here. I feel like I've been pulling a lot of throat chakra cards lately, um, just here on the podcast. And for me, the throat chakra is a space, um, that I feel I can always use a little extra love. If you're not sure how to open or release the space, I, I recommend just touching your throat with your hands or just closing your eyes and centering in on that location of your body and listening to what it is that your body is wanting to communicate with you or what your higher self is trying to share with you. Um, I know growing up for me, speaking was a very difficult act and it wasn't really encouraged 
And so um, it was an intention that I set my freshman year of high school to enroll myself in a drama class to help me with speaking um, because I was, I was done with being quiet. I was done with being super shy and I wanted to enhance those skills. So if this is a space for you that you feel especially sensitive, I encourage you to listen to your body and see if there are any actions or things that you can do um, to help open up this chakra so that you can connect with yourself on a deeper level with communication. Alrighty. Um, so today we're talking all about biomorphic uh, design and biomorphic design is basically an approach to interior design um, that draws on inspiration from natural forms, organic shapes that are found in nature. And if you remember, I, I did a, a 2023 trends episode at the beginning of the year. And part of that trend was in this realm of biomorphic design, meaning that um, a lot of shape of interiors and color of interiors is really being reflective in nature and you can see it everywhere. Like everything has a curve. Everything is organic and shape. Straight lines are definitely on their way out. It's really about incorporating nature more into our interiors. And the term itself, biomorphic, um, just stems from the word bio, meaning life, and then morphic is um, meaning form. So life form. So reflecting the form of nature. So with interior design and biomorphic design, this is really going to connect with your, your clients on a subconscious level by integrating organic shapes, curves, and patterns reminiscent of plants, of animals, and the human body. It's actually going to invoke the sense of harmony and connection to the natural world on another level. So they're going to feel really comfortable going into these spaces that have these soft curves, that have these colors that are not so stark, kind of going away from those, you know, stark whites, those grays and leaning more into the warmer tones. It's also a space of elevating well-being and creativity and again, comfort within our spaces. Um, research shows that exposure to organic shapes and natural elements has a positive impact on human psychology. It also reduces stress. It promotes relaxation and it also increases productivity. Um, so if you're in a space where you're creating interiors for a commercial space, offices, that kind of thing, this is definitely something that you're going to want to incorporate and share with your client, letting them know that by incorporating biophilic design, it's actually going to increase the productivity of their employees. By incorporating biophilic design, your spaces become more inviting, nurturing. It's going to create a space that really um, physically and emotionally um, supports your clients that are going to be in the space. And you can do this with furniture. You can do it with lighting, wall textures, materials, like anything and everything that you're bringing into a space um, is going to be enhanced by that, that power of nature by using this design philosophy. And with us being so technologically advanced or just so inundated by technology in our homes, in our offices, um, being able to bring nature in is, is really going to be a huge benefit. It's also supportive in the realm of sustainability. And, you know, we spoke about it being a holistic design approach. And this is just one way to incorporate that with your clients. So when you're talking about holistic interior design, you can share the idea of biomorphic design in relationship with these patterns connecting back to nature. When somebody asks, well, you know, what is holistic interior design? This is one aspect that you can very easily connect them with. I feel like they, um, as a, you know, a, a lay person or just a, a person off the street can really understand how these curves and these soft movements and colors can really invoke a space that is supporting the well-being um, of themselves into, into your site. So one thing I wanted to do was give you some tips on how you can incorporate this with materials and textures that you probably use on a daily basis, but aren't 
fully conscious about it. And, and when you're designing in this realm, you can really see the connection. And I know you're designing all the time and you're already doing a lot of this, but I just wanted to bring attention to you that you're actually designing on a holistic level that is supporting your client. So um, I wanted to highlight eight ways that you can do this through materials and textures. And one of my favorite is wood. Um, just that, that natural element of wood um, just brings warmth. It brings organic texture into the spaces. Um, the grain patterns and the variations of the colors brings a sense of authenticity and connection to the natural world. I also love incorporating live edge material into the space so that they can really understand what part of the tree or the plant is being used in, in your furniture piece or even on the floor. I have a, a project that we completed a few years ago and we did wood plank floor, but instead of the planks being straight, our planks actually curve and move. It's very organic looking. Um, and it just gives a sense of softness and flow into the space versus just having these straight lines. It's, it's um, just a really soft wood floor that's really beautiful. And like I said, it, it moves. It's just, um, it's a really great way of incorporating wood and organic shape into the space. Uh, number two is stone. Absolutely love bringing in natural stone like marble, um, slate, quartzite into a space because it gives you that texture and that pattern from earth. It's literally coming from the ground. It's, it's showing you um, geological formations that the earth has created, which is really, really cool. So it brings in a sense of solidity and earthliness into the space and centering and grounding energy into the space. And you can also do this with crystals. Um, to have a visual crystal in a space also gives you that sense of groundedness. Number three is the material of cork. And cork is a sustainable material harvested from the bark of cork oak trees. Um, the texture of oak is so different and it's visually appealing. It's natural and it's eco-friendly. Um, when you touch it, it's soft. Um, it's great for acoustics. And it just brings a little something different to a space. You can get cork furniture, you can get cork floors, wall coverings. There's all kinds of ways that you can incorporate this material into your design projects. The next one is uh, woven materials. So this is a huge trend right now. Think of rattan, wicker, bamboo, um, any natural material that's woven like caning is going to give you the sense of craftsmanship, but it also has a very organic texture to it that's really invoking and visually um, beautiful. So you probably see that all over the place, um, but I just love woven material. Number five is, is connected to that woven material and that's using natural fibers, just like jute, sisal, seagrass, anything that's super earthy. Um, textures that you're going to want to bring the outside in. You see this in a lot of coastal design um, and you can of course use this um, with rugs, mats, and upholstery. Um, it just has a tactile um, element to it and it also just naturally has those warmer tones incorporated into those natural fibers which is really cool. Number six is organic patterns. So anything that's going to reflect the patterns of leaves or flowers or nature in any way, and this can be incorporated in wallpaper, fabric, tile, um, actual art pieces, photographs, that kind of thing, bringing in natural, the natural world into your home is going to really be pleasant and calming to the people that are in the space. Number seven, of course, is um, bringing in plants. So living walls, um, you know, that are growing um, or even just bringing plants into the space uh, is really, really beautiful. It's going to um, improve the indoor air quality. And of course, it's connected to biophilic design, which we have spoke about so much. Um, there's nothing more beautiful than bringing a healthy, beautiful plant 
into a space to give you that sense of harmony and balance. Number eight is textured surfaces. So having things that have texture, embossing, um, that just want to make you kind of curl up with it, like pillows that have texture, throws that have that have texture, wallpapers that are textured are super, super important. And it's just going to kind of create that sort of cocoon like um, energy into these spaces. People are going to want to stay longer. They feel comfortable in them. And as a bonus, um, I'm throwing in windows and skylights. Having beautiful picture windows, bringing in a skylight into a space is really going to connect us naturally with nature by actually seeing nature alive and um, in our spaces, bringing the sun down into our spaces. It's also going to connect us with our circadian rhythm. We're just going to keep us as humans in flow with nature. So whenever you can, I know there's commercial spaces and, and, and places don't have a lot of windows, but if you can somehow incorporate a skylight or something into that space or encourage it, it's really going to support um, the people that are working and living in those spaces all together. So I just wanted to really highlight today with um, biomorphic design, just Again, letting you know that it is one of those design tools that we have to reduce stress, it reconnects us to nature and it brings in balance and harmony. And these are things that I know you're already doing, um, but it's nice to just call attention and just to give yourself a refresh when you are speaking with a client, how important it is to bring in certain elements of nature into the space. And there's a million different ways that you can incorporate nature um, into these spaces just by the patterns, the textures, and the actual elements and materials that you're bringing in. So when a client is kind of wondering why do we have to have all these textures or, you know, what's the significance of that? They like to hear stories. They like to know why it's important to bring certain elements in and they're hiring you as a professional to, uh, to connect them, to connect them back to nature, to connect them back to their own personal nature. And especially if you're a holistic interior designer, this is just one aspect of holistic interior design that you can use to enhance the lives and well-being of your clients and their families in their spaces. Um, I would love to know how you all are incorporating um, biomorphic design into your spaces. If you've got a really cool material or a product or a new way of doing something, please share it with us. Um, and I also invite you to join our free community at designkevin.com where we share resources, we share our struggles, we celebrate our wins together, and we just support each other. And it's a beautiful space to connect with other holistic interior designers um, to share all this knowledge so that we can improve our world, our client's world, and Mother Earth. So invite you there. Alrighty. Uh, until next time, please take care and we will see you soon. You've been listening to the Holistic Interior Design Business Podcast. If it's one that you have been enjoying, please share with anyone else that you think can benefit from this knowledge and leave us a five-star review that helps us get seen and found by other new and aspiring interior designers. And if you're looking for mentorship, I invite you to join our club here at the Design Coven. It's a bridge between school and real life interior design. We get in much deeper there. We have virtual and in-person events. So everyone is welcome. You don't need to have a design degree to be part of it. Just an interest in holistic interior design. I also want to thank our editor, Marcy Ferry and Ken Seth Thibodeau, who is our music composer. Until next time, be well, and we will see each other soon.